Here we are in Saskatchewan in a black spruce forest. This is the iconic boreal forest here, dominated by slow-growing black spruce trees. This little guy here is probably on the order of at least 100 years old. This is our northern carbon bank. When we think about the water cycle and the role of black spruce forests, these are really places where water is stored on the landscape. And because of that wet nature, the carbon gets stored there as well. And so if the water cycle changes and we experience drying in the climate, then we can expect the carbon dynamics to change at the same time. And that's one of the really important reasons why we use eddy flux towers combined with hydrological research to study how these ecosystems might change in the future. We're on the top of the old Jack Pine Flex Tower at one of the Boreal Ecosystem Research and Monitoring Sites. It's one of four flux towers running in, well, three mature forest ecosystems and one wetland fen. Uh, these sites have been operated nearly continuously since 1994. Part of the strategy behind these flux towers is to collect integrated data sets in the carbon cycle, hydrological and atmospheric that then can be made available to the modeling community to evaluate and improve those models. What I'm doing right now is I'm coring a mature jack pine tree that probably established after a fire that burned through this area in 1910. And we're really interested in trying to figure out how this forest affects the water balance of this local area. We're actually taking these detailed cores and sectioning them and trying to look at some of the stable isotopes of water that are contained within this wood. And from that, we can start to piece together the story of how the roots below that we have a very hard time seeing or understanding, maybe taking up water from different parts of the soil through the growing season. The big question that we have is, how are these dry forests going to respond to increased warming and drying arising from climate change? But on a bigger scale, we face the question of even knowing whether when this forest burns again, or if we log it, will it recover back to something like what we see here? Or is it on its way to something totally different? We're only a short distance away from the prairie forest boundary. And so we would expect these forests to be very sensitive to small changes in climate. This has been a really interesting site to work with students on research. I recently came to the University of Saskatchewan to study the role of uh, climate variability on the coupling between ecology and vegetation. Long-term monitoring sites Flux tower, highly detailed data sets will help me a lot to model the interaction between vegetation and climatology. So I just started PhD at U of S to you know look at land and atmospheric interactions in cold regions. I think that the real opportunity to collect some quality data and to be working with some you know really great people having different experience and backgrounds, which really helps you to understand the system comprehensively brought me here to work on these sites. I have visited fan site and old jack pine, and now I'm standing at old black spruce. But this thing is really new to me. I have never visited any forests. It's very really cool, actually. This fen in the southern boreal forest really exemplifies the role of the boreal forest in the global water balance. So. 30% of boreal forests are either wetlands, like the one I'm standing in, or open water. And in fact, it's really astounding if you think that about 70% of the world's liquid fresh water, which is what we rely on, is held within the boreal forest. So this ecosystem, this biome, is essential to the role of water on our planet. By making detailed measurements of how the hydrological system operates. Uh, we're able to obviously improve our understanding of things, but we're also able to collect really impressive data sets to find hydrological models, uh, weather models, and also to develop new ways of modeling that which we can test and then roll out with future 
um, water releases. The main research theme that our Global Institute work is focusing on here at these research sites is the issue of climate change. We are studying climate change in a number of different ways. We do it by retrospective analyses, by piecing together past growth and relating that to long-term climate records from nearby weather stations like in Prince Albert. And then we also do it by linking our data from our very detailed flux tower measurements, which have been uh, going on for 20 years now, to localized measurements of productivity from different components, from the stems of trees, from the canopies, and from the soil and the forest understory to understand how energy, water, carbon is partitioned. And that allows us to tease out how year-to-year -year variations in climate, which you've ever lived in Saskatchewan, you know they're substantial, can influence the processes of the ecosystem.